Hi everyone and welcome to another piano review video here at Miriam Pianos. My name is Stu Harrison. Today we're taking a look at a very unpiano like piano. It's the Roly Seaboard Rise 49, an instrument that has been with us for coming on five years, four years for sure. And it's one that's in my personal collection and uh, one that honestly didn't get a lot of use until about seven months ago. And I thought, why not come out and share a little bit about this very interesting wacky piano that I have grown to really love and enjoy as a creative tool. And I thought there's probably a good chance that most people out there may not be aware that this type of piano instrument exists. So why not share it uh, and have some fun? If it's the first time that you have come to the channel here on YouTube, we would really sincerely appreciate if you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. We're always coming out with interesting videos. We try and make them as useful as possible, as detailed as possible, as balanced as possible. Uh, and we are glad that you are here uh, to share a bit of time with us and learn a bit more about instruments. So without further ado, let's get started with the Roly Seaboard Rise 49 right away. So the Seaboard Rise 49, which is from the company Roly, some of you may be familiar with Roly, some of you may not. It is a company that sort of hit the scene within the last 10 years, and they uh, came up with a really interesting concept, and really the whole company has grown and built around this singular concept, uh, which is, is it possible to build a piano-type instrument that has all of the same... Uh, expression possibilities as something like a guitar or something like a saxophone where you have a far more tactile or physical control over the expression of the tone. Because normally when we're in piano land, and especially when we're playing acoustic pianos, you have uh, on, an, on the surface really just uh, two controls over what happens with an instrument, which is the pitch uh, and the volume. Now, obviously, higher level players and professional classical players will tell you that uh, it's it's more nuanced than that, that certainly you have the ability to draw different tones out of an instrument. But if we're talking about in, a, in, in the most simplistic uh, senses of what your parameters of expression are, really you're talking about uh, volume or dynamics as well as pitch. And that's kind of about it. Uh, I have always secretly lusted to be an electric guitar player uh, who had all of this ability to bend the notes and to add vibrato to the notes and yes modern synthesizers have given us the ability to add all of those things but um, in a lot of ways the controls are not intuitive maybe intuitive is not the right word the controls certainly are not a part of the creative expression. There's these me mechanical knobs and joysticks that you have to the sides of the synth. So uh, suffice it to say, Roly came up with a solution or a, uh, a, a kind of a different approach to how to get around this issue, which was let's add an additional three dimensions to the, the tactile playing experience of pressing a key. So we know we've already got pitch, we know we already have um, basically velocity. Uh, but what would happen if you also had expression depending on how deep or shallow you were in the key bed? 
Let's say that once you'd hit the key, you also had the ability to kind of bend the pitch. That's kind of an interesting thing. And also, once you had already hit the key, you had the ability to still affect uh, in just as dynamic a way as if you just played the note, the volume. So like mega aftertouch. Uh, and this is essentially what they've come up with. So this is not the first generation by any means. I think it was first the Rolly Grand and then the Rolly Seaboard. Uh, and I think the Rise 49, which this is, maybe represents the third or fourth generation of product. And I've had this for a couple of years. And I was very excited when I first got it. Then it kind of sat in a closet for about a year where I really wasn't sure what to do with it. Uh, it did everything that I had hoped it to do, but I was having a hard time finding a creative outlet to actually use it. And then for whatever reason, about seven or eight months ago, oh wait, no, that is a reason, COVID. I found myself at home with a lot more time on my hands and uh, an interest in finding some new creative uh, toys to play around with or textures, and I dug the Rolly back out. And I have to say that since I've done that, this has been kind of an indispensable creative tool for me. Uh, I do a lot of uh, production as a hobby on the side. Uh, my wife is also a singer and a songwriter. She does a lot of writing. So this has kind of become an interesting textural uh, compositional tool for us. So I thought, let's share this uh, with the Cyberverse and our wonderful YouTube community uh, to expose you to this kind of um, interesting, weird little instrument. Uh, and just open your eyes to what uh, uh, you know piano can be uh, when reimagined, such as this. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, really rather than the sound, because the sound is entirely software driven. This thing does not generate any of its tone on its own. So this is a MIDI controller, just like any other MIDI controller would be. It's it really just sends MIDI signal, but it sends MIDI signal on a number of MIDI channels. Uh, that, that uh, kind of help the computer to interpret all these different parameters. So anyway, it's still just a MIDI uh, controller, albeit a fancier one. Uh, and so the keyboard itself is 49 notes, hence, you know, the name Seaboard Rise 49. And you've got, uh, it goes from a C uh, to a C. So it's four octaves plus the extra notes so that you have the complete um, C to C. And it works just, or it looks just like a regular piano. You've got white notes that are kind of raised over here. Uh, and then black notes, which are, you know, approximately in the same place that a white or a black note on a piano would have been, except it's got this white stripe to help your eye visually kind of see uh, what's going on. It's covered in a rubber. I don't know whether it's a latex, but I'm guessing it's some kind of a latex. Uh, that means that your finger sort of, it, you've got grip, but it's not sticky, uh, which is great uh, because you do a lot of sliding when you're playing uh, with the Roly. Um, and it's a little bit squishy and rubbery. So like you can, you know, put your finger in and mash it about, and that actually affects the tone. And what I find uh, happens when you first start playing this instrument, and not first, let's say you've spent a few hours with it so that your fingers get used to this, because the first time you touch this, your fingers have no idea what to make of it. You're, the spacing doesn't feel right, and you kind of have to spend a few hours just playing scales and pentatonics over it to kind of get a bit of a muscle memory for, for how this goes. But once that's done, you actually find yourself naturally um, uh, uh, using all these different expressive parameters without even thinking about it because it just all of a sudden gives you this more organic textured sound and feel to the piano. It's like you've almost immediately turned the piano into like an acoustic guitar where you can sort of just feel the strings vibrating and you can sort of bend things here and there. So here's, you know, C major triad. And so I've got it on um, a Rhodes pad right now. It's called Ambient Chrome EP. And we'll talk more about the synth later. Um, but so there's an attack. And then it just sort of is this open sustain. But then I can press it. And we sort of get that uh, uh, modulated sound 
by changing the pressure. But then as I go into the key, there's also another modulation going on. But then pitch is also there. cool. On top of that, you've got control over all of those extra dimensions uh, that we're talking about. So you can completely shut down that whole like pitch thing. Let's say you're finding that really annoying. It's not serving your purpose. Well, boom, it's gone. Press the note, slide all over the place, doesn't do anything. back all the way up again. Or you can have it so it's there, but it's very minimal. So it's sliding into the next pitch with almost nothing out of tune. Whereas if it's when it's all the way up, there's no problem hanging out on that kind of quarter tone. It's not going to stop you. And then you have the same thing for the in and like into the keyboard or out of the keyboard and uh, also with the pressure. You've got a program programmable uh, pad here where you can have X uh, axis and Y axis parameters as well. So I think I'm, I'm doing a screen capture right now as well. So I think you can probably see that happening right on uh, uh, yeah, right within the app. So that's pretty much it. You've got four octaves. You've got this kind of rubbery thing that allows you uh, to, to really kind of knead the keys, almost like it's a piece of dough or something. And then you've got physical controls over all of that extra stuff. So you can uh, sort of customize exactly what you want. You have octave control down here. So if you want to shift up, it's just the plus. Shift down is the minus. You can put a sustain pedal in this thing and you can uh, program the advance or um, you know reverse. Basically, you can order a show or have this assigned to a different set of presets so that you're working through um, you know, a live uh, setting, uh, for example. Uh, you, you, can, you can order a whole bunch of sounds. Now let's talk about what you actually hook this up to. Because they call this like a 5D, you know, five-dimensional uh, MIDI instrument, it, I don't think it's the only one, but it's definitely the best known one. And Roly makes their own software, not surprising, uh, because if they didn't make their own software, the hardware would not, I don't think, have nearly the same level of adoption as it is. And so I'm operating in Logic. I'm, uh, I know I operate in both Pro Tools and Logic, but I generally prefer Logic personally uh, when I'm doing any sort of composition or, or production. Uh, and I've got uh, the Roly Studio Player open. And this is kind of a home base that allows you to pick sounds from any of the various five-dimensional uh, synthesizers that they have for it. So, uh, because there's a few uh, that'll work. So this is kind of a, a, um, a bridge that allows you to select uh, from all of those different synths and all of the different presets. And I've already gone through and picked some that I really like but there's all sorts of expansion packs you can get. And so the type of sounds and the texture of the sounds is so thick. It's really, really cool. So as I said, this is called Ambient Chrome. Which I like, it's kind of moody. It's got a little bit of an indie vibe to it. Um, then we've got Autumn Valley Pad. Very Blade Runner. Cthulhu.
cathedral solo horn. It's so cool. It's you know, like there's kind of Asian influence and and um, you know Mediterranean and and uh, sort of Arabic influence in some of these sounds, but qu you can't quite nail it down as being definitively any one of those and you mix a bit of outer space in there and it's kind of what what you have here classic acid bass i mean you can honestly i've lost uh, many many hours of my life invested many hours of my life into playing with this. How cool is that? And what I find especially interesting is when you start mixing some of these textures in with what I would call more conventional sounds, such as piano. So I already pre-recorded something uh, that sounded pretty good with ambient chrome. So we're gonna keep it like that and I'm going to add a few other things, just give you a sense of what is possible, because it's pretty cool. So let's go desert sands on this one. Whoops, I was on the wrong track. We're gonna try that again. Sounds cool, doesn't it? Yeah, it's freaking awesome, man. Yeah. It's... It's like that's movie soundtrack 101, you need one of those. <laughs> oh. That's awesome. Entirely. so on and so forth. And then you start to mix that up with something that sounds a little more conventional to ground it. Uh, and let's just do something like this.
that just keeps going and going and going. And then uh, one of my other favorite features of Logic, I'm hardly alone on this one. And by the way, this is not a Logic video, but it's kind of turning into a little bit of a Logic video, but you know, what are you gonna do? Um, is of course, the drummer function. on and on and on and on. I don't want to waste too much time on that. Lee, I hope we're going to do a little bit of cutting in there so it's not so, <laughs> so, it's not so long. Um, so in addition, so in addition, uh, to being able to go through with the Roly player, which is obviously uh, a great way to just sort through uh, the various presets. So the other area uh, that this is really great for, you're getting the idea, obviously, uh, that this is, for from a pad standpoint, really great uh, for all of the different undulating stuff. But the other place that it can be really great is for leads. so on and so forth. So you got leads, you got pads, and I find mostly this is gonna be useful from a production standpoint. When I first got it, I had these grand visions of getting onto a stage and improvising with this thing, and it didn't work very well, mostly because you have to, I guess I didn't get fluent enough with it at the moment there where I felt comfortable to have the laptop there constantly switching between all of these presets and kind of knowing what to expect uh, in a live stage environment. So I quickly find myself defaulting back to an 88 note piano, which was kind of a place of safety. Uh, but for sure, in a production sense, this is a really cool accompanying instrument to have along with an 88 note piano. So uh, that's our look at the Roly Seaboard Rise 49. Uh, we've got a controller that's giving you all of this extra dimensional control um, with pressure, with pitch, uh, with depth on the on the key and mated with some really easy to use well-designed Roly software that gives you either just basic control over the synth or as detailed control over the synth as you possibly want and it just works in your DAW just like any other uh, software instrument would. So uh, if you are in the world of production and you are looking for something that might be kind of inspiring and cool, uh, I would say this thing is, a, is, is kind of great to have in the toolbox. I found it to be super useful, especially if you're uh, doing any sort of electro pop uh, uh, kind of EDM-y stuff. Uh, it's, it's nice uh, to have that texture. 
and uh, not bad as well if you're doing some fusion uh, stuff and you're looking for uh, some lead control where it isn't so mechanical and it's something that's a bit more organic. Anyway, this is probably the least piano-like review we've done on the channel so far, but I thought it might be fun. So I hope you guys have stuck around and enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, read a little bit more about it uh, below in the description, and you can dig around the internet and find a bit more about it as well. So thank you so much for joining us here at Miriam Pianos on YouTube. My name is Stu Harrison. This has been the Rolly Seaboard 49, and we'll see you back for more videos in the future. The sun is